Righty, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we've got a very special show. We have almost the entire cast from The Fighter kicking off to will be tomorrow night by the time you hear this. That'll be uh, the 14th of October on SABC3. So let's start from the right hand side. Just give us your name, where you're from, and then and, and, uh, we'll start from there. What's up world? It's uh, Mike DiOrio coming at you live uh, from the United States. Uh, just a blessing here, man. Hello guys, this is Mzwante Lashlongo from Japan, Gamapumulo, uh, South Africa. Yeah. South African flavor there. Hello guys, my name is Abderrahman, I come from Algeria and I'd be happy to be here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Junaid Ebanks, I'm from the UK, uh, Lancashire, so let's get it, let's go. 100%. Um, cool guys, so obviously we are now, for you guys, winding down to the end of, of, of what's been the show. Let's just maybe start with, with give us a bit of insight on, on, on what the whole experience has been like traveling to a foreign land for, for most of you um, entering the show. This is going to be the first time something like this has ever been done on, on, on African lands. And um, yeah, just give us a bit of insight on, on, on to what it's been like. Okay, so um, I, th I feel like we're trailblazing, we're trendsetting. This is, uh, this is something new. This is something that's never been done before, especially for the EFC. And it's going to reach and touch a lot of people. We've got a lot of uh, personalities in the house. A lot of people um, are going to obviously love to watch this because it goes on for 10 episodes. So that's t 10 weeks, an hour a week uh, on SABC3 uh, nine, at 9 p.m. on the Saturday. So I think with the personalities that are in the house, it's, um, you know, it's, especially with there being no women uh, around <laughs> us, <laughs> we're all being locked in one place, you know, and we've got all these guys with a lot of testosterone and, you know, um, there's, there's rivalries in the house and all, uh, all sorts of things are getting said, you know, it's getting a bit testy, especially now we're coming towards the end of it, you know, the, the, the competition's coming to a close, but it's it's more fever pitch than it ever has been in, that, in the house up to, up to today, because uh, today has been really awkward. Um, but you'll all get to see all that. You'll get to see our um, opinions on it, uh, you know, because because uh, like I said, we're, we're we're quite far into it now, so we've had a, we've had quite a, a bit of time to settle into it. Um, but at the beginning, it was it was more, I don't know, adjusting. It was more of an adjustment. Now we've adjusted. It's more feeling each other yeah, out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah sure. that's exactly what it is. Sure. How has it been dealing with the obvious cultural differences? You guys are from all over the world. Uh, we, we've got some South African boys, African boys, boys from England, boys from America. H how's it been adapting to the different cultures in the house? Uh, for me, it's very good because uh, English is not my first language. And here uh, I learn uh, more than my friends uh, from USA, from UK, from Germany, from uh, Australia, from uh, South Africa. I learned a little bit uh, words in Zulu, so I'm very happy. It's a good, <laughs> very, very good experience for me. Let's let's hear those Zulu words, man. I hope they... Saubona and Johnny. Saubona, Saubona and Johnny. Yeah, you took it. Di apida. Misala. Awe, papa. It's really been a blessing, man. Like, uh, this is an experience that I would never have gotten to have yeah. on my own if it weren't for the EFC and weren't for fighting. I've had a rough go, uh, but this is just... Uh, changed my whole life um these four guys especially well these three guys in this room right now you got janaid you got abdul you got swandili are three of my best friends ever like i think uh we become brothers on this show especially our team um you know uh it's been amazing i've learned so much about different cultures i've eaten so much different food here that i wouldn't have at home and it's just I got to see Zwandele do a Zulu dance and inspire a bunch of kids. Like, it was amazing. It's sure. just, it's been a blessing and uh, thank God. 100%, man. Um, did you guys get to see a little bit of South Africa besides Santon and... Yeah, we uh, went out to Soweto to see a bunch of kids um, that, live, that live in the area. You know, it was, it was great. It was a great experience. I mean... You get to uh, where where we are. We're, we're in the rich areas of um, of, of, of Santon, so we don't we don't really get to go out much. Uh, we don't really get to see what what, what South Africa truly is and uh, and how people truly live here. And obviously, the disparity between the rich and the poor here there's such a massive gap. It's unbelievable. I mean, uh, from where I come from, um, the gap between rich and poor it's quite large, but it's nowhere near as big as here. And it was quite of a culture shock to me to see how these people they don't have welfare here. They don't, uh, you know, they don't have. Some of them don't have running water or electricity or anything like that. You know, uh, they're stealing um, 
power from from some of the um, the street lamps outside. You know, there's there's like spider webs uh, going on. And these are some of the things I've never seen before, and uh, how how people live out here. But I looked I looked at all the children that were in the in these areas, and they're all happy. They don't have nothing. You know, they don't have PS4s. They don't have um, laptops, iPads. Oh, yeah, they don't have toilets. You know what I mean. And these kids are still happy. They're still smiling. You know, it's an inspiration. You know, they don't have much, but they're, they're still happy. Sure, man. In America, we're spoiled, man. You uh, people complain all the time in America, but we have free healthcare, we have welfare. Um, here, man, they make the most of any opportunity. Like Janae saying, these kids are smiling and they don't even realize what they're missing. Um, I think that's just a blessing in disguise because they're experiencing life for what life truly is meant to be. Um, people every day take things for granted, uh, and just being out here has definitely been a humbling experience. I know for all of us, I'm pretty sure. 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 Let's let's get you in there. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Obviously, um, no offense, anybody looking like uh, you carry around a bit of weight. Yeah. What's it been like in in the house, keeping your weight, cutting weight for your fights and stories like that? Have you guys worked together as a team to kind of uh, ensure that everyone's getting making the right weight and so on? And, and, and what's that sort of aspect been like? Uh, thanks, bro. Uh, we always work together as a team. We help each other each and every situation. So. It not be anyone is getting big for the weight because all the guys they are professional so they know how to maintain weight so always doing like teamwork everything's about teamwork like for me i'm not cutting too much weight for my body because uh, i'm already around 88 and so 84 is is not difficult for me yeah so all work together it's about team team said it's about working together not about it okay yeah, you guys were, were all of you at, at the last live event for the efc that was Durban? The, yes. yeah Durban. Yeah. You guys were all there. What did you guys make of of the event and and, and the talent you saw that was available? Uh, for me, I think it's very good organization, but the level is not very high. Uh, the ten contestant contestant uh, here, we can fight easy in the EFC Durban. So uh, maybe three three fights are very hard, but the level is not high. Okay, okay. I'm sure you'll have a you guys disagreeing with you there no i'm here <laughs> nah, on some real though they, they put on a heck of a show it was amazing sure. great experience but uh supposedly that was one of their small shows and it was one of their less talented cards um so we haven't got to see a real efc event um in december i guess is going to mark the first real efc event it will be the finals of the show as well as saeed versus pena um but you know it was uh I feel like we're just we have a lot of pride in our countries where we come from and we're here putting it all on the line so we do think we can hang with any guy in the efc you know that's that's the goal that's what you want you don't want people here thinking they don't make yeah. it true you know? i mean if, if you look at it from our perspective we are fighters from all over the world we're builders undefeated fighters on a show um, you know just and we're going at it we don't think we can be beaten you know end of the day the the um the, uh, say if somebody loses in this in this tournament, it doesn't go on our record because it's not it's counted as an exhibition match. But so when we actually start fighting in the EFC, then it will go on our records. So win, lose, or draw, we've still got that mentality and we've still been working really hard to, uh, towards it. And we're going to be a match and a force to be, re uh, be reckoned with with anybody in the EFC. No one wants their O to go. I'll tell you that right now. No one here. <laughs> sure. Um, obviously, at the end of the rainbow has to be a gold in mind you, you guys must be looking at wh whoever gets through and, and, and how it all works out in the end there's was obviously in the beginning it was kind of billed as the winner from the show would go on to fight the winner between Drikas Duplessis and Yannick Bahati Drikas Duplessis won that fight Yannick Bahati in my opinion is, is still relevant he's still there he's still around so it kind of gives that division a couple of options as a fight I know Yannick Bahati will be looking for an opponent Drikas Duplessis should be looking for an opponent and a lot of the attention is going to be drawn to you guys a lot of uh, the way i see it I, i'm guessing is that you know there's going to be a lot of contenders in your weight division looking to get a piece of whoever's around you know whoever makes it through on on, on the fight as it is have you guys studied or or, or looked at the contestant the contestants in that division to kind of way up where you fit in think about guys like Trickers Duplessis and Yannick Bahati and kind of measure them up let's say like that uh, I have because yeah. um, I've been watching y yeah. Yannick Bahati's from the UK yeah. so I've known about him for a long time now him and his whole crew you know there's, there's a few guys from 
uh, you know, a few guys that I'm actually friends with out of that, that's a UTC gym, like sure. uh, Michael Eunice, um, uh, Fabian Edwards, who's the brother of Leon Edwards, who's in the uh, U uh, sure. USC. So I, I already know about Yannick Bahai. Um, obviously, I watched his fight with Drikus Duplessis and um, that got my interest, it, that spiked my interest with him. So obviously, I've gone back into his career and I've watched everything that he's, that he's done. Um, for me, uh, it's like, because I'm South Africa, I'm following AFC every day, every night, I'm watching AFC and I'm a weight. weight. Uh, yeah, for me, like, I'm staying there in the weight, weight and uh, can I can say this, Pagat uh, always say Pagat is fighting, uh, I wish one day to fight him because he's a good guy, he's a strong guy. So the way I want to grow, I want to fight those guys are better than me, you know what I mean? So uh, one day I wish, if FC can do something for me because I'm going to contrast for FC, I fought towards in FC, it was FC 49, I take fight of the Nazi there. So I'm already in AFC, so I can take everything if they give it to me. So to stay in the middle weight, I'm there. I'm not. I never quit. I'm learning too much for different countries, guys. UK, France, every guys is here. So I'm learning. So now Mzwandile is different. What I'm gonna say? Thanks. Hundred percent. You guys are obviously Team Syed. What was it like? I don't know how much you guys knew about the history between the two coaches, Demar Penn and Urshad Syed. I've had I've had the opportunity to speak to both of them through through the last bit of their careers and and and, and how turbulent it's been through, what it's all been like. Um, they had a, a cracking fight when they tried to uni well when they eventually unified the belts. It then came up. Uh, Demart had the issue with um, contamination. The, the contaminated supplements, which I felt in my mind he he did everything. He did all his due diligence. He he managed to get himself clean, which doesn't happen too often, you know. Um, obviously, that's always going to be a, a, a talking point for, for Urshad Zahed and whoever he faces, I guess, going forward, which just seemed to all happen at the right time to kind of bring together these coaches for the first ever or the inaugural series of The Fighter. What was it like learning from these guys? And I'm guessing that there must have been some sort of controversies along the way, a, a lot of heat, a lot of anger, a lot of emotion. What was it like with the coaches, if, if we put it like that? All right. Well, uh, initially, man, the first uh, ever piece of Saeed and Pena I saw was the initial press conference. And in that press conference, I my opinion was Saeed was kind of a dick. Um, and Damat was really cool. <laughs> but let me tell you something. That's changed major. Um, Coach Saeed is himself. He's a great down-to-earth guy. He never puts on a front. He never acts for the camera. Uh, he's himself always, and he's just really humble. And he gives it. He cares about us all. Like, uh, I, comparatively, I'm grateful that he picked me. Um, I'm grateful that he picked the team that we have. Uh, he's he's instilled in us a team mentality. He's been by our side. He's been in the sauna when Janaid cut weight the first time. Janaid took a really good fight, cut a bunch of weight. Um, coach was right there in there sweating with him. Like, I haven't seen DeMott do that. And also, DeMott is very professional. He's cool, but he also is different when the cameras are there. So it's kind of a catch-22. Saeed's himself, the same way you see him on the cameras, he is in person. So, you know, they do have some hostility. Uh, they've almost banged a few times. You'll wait. You'll see. Um, but honestly, I think we, we benefited. We got the better coach. Uh, he cares more about us individually. And I think Demach is on a mission to prove he's the best. Meanwhile, Saeed's putting more effort into us. And it will pay off for him because he's been rolling with a bunch of 84-pounders, you know, kilograms. And uh, that's where they said his ground game was weak. Not anymore. So you guys just wait and tune in and uh, – I think we got the better end of the stick here. Okay. We'll, we'll see what the other team has to say about their coach, man. But that, that sounds great, man. It's, 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 it's so exciting, especially for us fans. It's, you know, if, if, if you look at MMA as a whole, basically as, as a thriving sport, we know it as today. The ultimate fighter is really what, if you can put it in a way, is really what saved MMA, what put MMA on the map. The first ever ultimate fighter was what really made mma go almost mainstream you know it was kind of that situation where people were calling each other you know change your channel you need to see this shit it was going crazy and i feel like we are on the doorsteps of of, of that for for south africa and africa as a whole and and obviously you guys were involved because it's not efc africa anymore it's efc international and efc has opened its doors to all the international guys so just with that in mind what, what do you guys see as a benefit in your career? You obviously are 
on the doorsteps of being the pioneers of a new generation of MMA and what does that mean for you in your career? Uh, I think now uh, the fighters start in MMA in 14, 15 so they are completely in 18, 19 uh, for, for me for example I start uh, wrestling in 19 now I'm uh, 27 I start MMA last year but uh, it's very important to to train in MMA especially because MMA is very hard. You are all the the, the sports and it's not easy. So next generation is very very good. You can see with uh, Dracus, sure. he's uh, 24 I think. Yeah, he's, he have he might two, be younger. In fact, he have two belts. Uh, we can see John Jones uh, is the same like me, but he start in 19. He take his, his belt in 20. But uh, yeah, the next generation uh, is very hard. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think Drickus has got a whole bunch of guys that are hunting for him and hu hungry now. He's got ten. He's got ten more contenders that, that he's going to be looking over his shoulder now. I mean, he, he may listen to this and may, uh, maybe laugh, but he's, he's got to take every last one of us in that house seriously because he's going to be at least be fighting one of us next year. And uh, this guy is because because of what he's been through when he's been, when he's been in the house and the situation that he's been through and plus all the heat that he's got uh, from fr from the show itself you know um, all eyes in Africa and around the world are going to be on this show and we know that we're we're the pioneers of this now um, this is what we carry with us everybody always remembers the uh, UFC the first tough you always remember every guy and the guy who won that one well, it's the same thing here you're going to remember every last one of us here because we've we've made this show really end entertaining we and set the bar high yeah, for the next have. generation yeah. so shout out to the next seasons you better keep up with us yeah. boy yeah. we make the history <laughs> history yeah, yeah sure it's, I, th I think it's such a it's such a great idea because it's the whole point of the show besides creating a greater talent pool is that it in guess people invested in your story so all of you had an opportunity to show yourself show your skills show who you are mm. where you're from represent your country and it guess people invested you know what i mean like it's that's why reality shows work people want to watch your story and see how far you go and it doesn't hurt that we're all undefeated too yeah 100 yes, percent. 100 percent. so, so for this thank you to efc for thank this, you EFC, this for opportunity real, because uh it's unbelievable in france i live in france it's forbidden mma so yeah we don't have choice to fight in France. We have uh, we go to UK, to to Germany, to Switzerland. So we can show uh, what we what we um, who we are in in France. So this uh, this opportunity is very very good for me, and I'm very happy thanks to EFC. Fantastic, man. Well, that's Team Syed. Next up, we've, we've got Team Penna. Guys, thank you very much. Thank we, you. We, we hope you enjoyed your stay here in South Africa, and, and hopefully we get to see you all again real soon. Thank you very much. Bless him, brother. Thank, thank, you. thank you. God bless. God bless. Aubona and Johnny. Yeah, up there. Ten of the world's best fighters living in one house, led by two rival champions competing against each other over 10 weeks in search of the ultimate contender. Introducing the most explosive competition in reality TV. This is The Fighter. What are you gonna do? Yeah, nothing. Egypt. It's nation against nation, fighter against fighter, and coach against coach. It's Team Penna, versus Team Syed. What? Where you at? This thing, no! Oh, no, this oh, oh, you see you that fire. fire. What are you gonna do, huh? Oh, you up. Yeah. Let the battle begin. begin. The Fighter Season 1 premieres Saturday, October 14th. Proudly presented by Constantia Insurance.